Hello, I'm Alexis from Stump Kitchen, and I can't wait to show you, show you, tell you, and maybe show you a little of my Wall of Chefs journey. And for folks who don't know, I was on the Food Network show called Wall of Chefs, and I competed on that recently on TV. If you haven't watched it, you can catch it on foodnetwork.ca. My episode is called Burger Wars. I promise you a couple of good laughs at least one or two. <laughs> I put it out there on Instagram for you folks to ask questions about Wall of Chefs behind the scenes and you asked some wonderful questions. So I'm going to dive right into those. So here's how I got on the Wall of Chefs. First of all, I had a couple of friends send me the audition like advert on Instagram. You should apply, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, sounds great. I had already applied to be on MasterChef. I got to the very last round of auditions and then I didn't make the final cut. So I was like, let's try it again. I've done this before, kind of. Why not put my hat in the ring? Hat in the ring? Shoe in the ring. I put in my written application form last July and they liked that so they called me back and they asked me to send in a video audition and pictures and a bunch more questions about myself Bleh. pardon me so i filmed this audition video i am making vegan and gluten-free mac and cheese deliciousness you can't go wrong with roasted garlic one of the things i love to do in the kitchen is use my stump as a kitchen tool and juicing citrus is one of my favorite things to do it just works so well for some texture just use your stump and texture it up squish <laughs> and they liked it so <laughs> maybe about two weeks later they sent me a note saying, congrats, you're in the show. Here is a CSI background check package. Have you ever been convicted of any crime, including reckless or drunk driving? No. Have you ever had a temporary restraining order issued against you, or has anyone ever attempted to attain a temporary restraining order against you? No. And then they ask for a bunch of character references, so they called some people to make sure I was who I was and that I'm an okay person, I guess. They told me what I could bring, basically just like different outfits and changes of clothes. So that was all in July. And then in September, they sent out the social media guidelines, which were like, don't talk about this on social media. You know, when you meet your co-competitors, like you don't stay in touch with them afterwards. I forgot to write down the actual shoot dates, but I think it was like, I flew out on September 26th, filmed on the 27th and flew back on the morning of the 28th. Filming happened over a year ago. I was seven weeks pregnant when they flew me out to Toronto to film my episode. So that's how long we had to wait to watch it and that's how long I had to keep it a secret. They also wanted me to send some pictures of me in action cooking in the kitchen. So I sent in a picture of me and Ethan who is an awesome kid that's been on the show with me before who also has a limb difference. And <laughs> they sent me a photo release form to sign so they could use it on, on the show, which they did. And they said, we'd really like to use this picture of you and your son, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Ethan is not my son. I mean, that would be great. I would feel very lucky if he was, but he's not. I just, that really, really made me laugh because people ask me if Callie's my daughter as well. Maybe it's like, you know, you have one hand, you have a kid with one hand. It just makes sense but it actually doesn't. Anyway, so that was a really funny little blip. I'm really glad they used the picture of Ethan and I on, on the actual show. That was really, really cool. I had to sign an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, telling me who I could or couldn't talk to and what I could or couldn't say, which was basically nobody. I could tell my partner, my mom, but that's basically it. And then I didn't hear anything until August of this year telling me that they're going to put out a press release for our season because my episode was in the, the second half of season one. Pardon me. I think the first half of season one was in the early of new year of the early of new year, the er early in the new year of 2020. <laughs> and then my half of the season was just this past September. So that's kind of the how it all happened story. I might've missed some details cause it was a little while ago, but that's the general 
process. When I was actually there, everyone was super, super friendly and super, super kind. So here are a couple random facts that I wanted to tell you about my experience, and then I'll jump into the Instagram questions and dig into those. The first really interesting thing about my Wall of Chefs experience is that they do tell you what your first experience is going to be like. Like they don't tell you exactly, but they do say when you come, make sure you have one of your dishes that you can showcase that kind of tells us about who you are as a cook. And they give you a few weeks notice. So you actually have some time to practice and perfect a recipe. I had about three or four that I was trying and I wanted to do, but I landed on what I made in the first competition, which is a vegan Caesar with a little vegan egg. I was constantly taste testing and you know, twer tweaking, I almost said twerking, <laughs> twerking the recipe, tweaking the recipe, trying different things out. And so Allison was well fed for a long, long time. She got to eat so many eggs. So many eggs. Oh yeah. The main reason why they tell you in advance is because they want to give you a chance to like get that recipe perfected within 30 minutes. Unlike what I thought on reality TV shows that are cooking shows, I thought that they might give you more than what's actually like listed on the clock, but they do not. There's no extra time. The countdown is all real. So I think they want to make sure that, you know, at least for the first competition that people are going to be successful because honestly cooking a dish that complex in 30 minutes, it's ridiculously hard like I was sweating in my kitchen trying to practice and timing it down to the second like it was so so hard but so rewarding once I got it but all of the competitions after that were completely like none of us knew anything that was coming up so another fun fact was yes I was pregnant during that I was seven weeks pregnant and I was super nauseous I even had to change my shirts because I got some raw on one and so luckily I had brought lots of different shirt ideas <laughs> for them because they said to bring shirts Kelsey and I got to kind of share a room they had food baskets for us in the the dressing rooms so I ate like all of the vegan and gluten free gluten free <laughs> granola bars because that's kind of all I could stomach at the time <laughs> They flew me out to Toronto. We filmed in the CBC filming studios, downtown Toronto. There was a driver there to pick me up at the hotel, yeah. pardon me, at like 5.15 a.m. And then it was like a 40 minute drive to the studio and we were to meet there at six. And so all of us home cooks met in the lobby without anyone else. We were just there meeting each other like, hey, I'm your competitor. <laughs> we had a lot of time before anything started to hang out and chat and I thought it was so awesome but also super weird. I was just like, we're gonna be competing soon but we're just like chit-chatting like pals. Before the first competition, I felt like they were all my friends and then I was like, oh, we have to, we have to now compete? <laughs> What's happening? Another really cool fact about being on the wall of chefs that I wouldn't have really known going in was that we got like three different practice rounds in that studio kitchen before we actually filmed. So the day itself was so long. <laughs> it was so, so long. Like I don't even know how people have the energy to do that. It was so long. So before round one, which you see on the episode, we did three different challenges. And can I remember what they are? Oh yeah, we were timed and we had to all make our version of an omelet. I haven't cooked an omelet in I don't even know how many years so I just tried to like go back into the recesses of my mind and figure out how to make an omelet. I think I used like maybe some garlic and tomatoes and some spring onions, eggs and cream. I, I don't really know. It turned out okay. It wasn't very pretty but I think it turned out okay. They gave us that challenge so we could all feel more confident in that kitchen because we were learning okay where are the Where's the salt? Where's the pans? It's totally stocked with so much stuff and like you could take hours just to go through all of the incredible ingredients that were there. It was really cool that they gave us a chance to like run around and figure out what we were doing. One interesting thing was we weren't allowed to go in front of the little kitchen, individual kitchen stations that you saw on the episode. If we went in front of them, we would be automatically disqualified. So these practice rounds were to kind of train us to not run around them. I don't know why we'd be disqualified. Like maybe we were out of the camera shot. I'm not really sure. There's a couple times that I almost went around because it would have been faster, but then I was like, no, and I had to come back. Another challenge that we had was they had a little food cart 
stocked with only specific ingredients and we had to use just what was on that tray to make a really awesome dish. That's when I got some real practice time cooking a chicken. And if you watch the actual episode, you'll see that I cook a chicken breast. And the only reason why I felt comfortable doing that is because we got to cook one in the practice round. Because I had no idea what to do and I, I really wanted to, I don't know, show the judges that I could do uh, something risky for me, which was cooking meat when I don't cook meat. I was like, well, I did it in practice. I'm gonna try it in the competition and see what happens. You can watch the episode to find out what happens, but yeah, that's kind of where that choice came from. Plus I was like, just like beside myself with nausea and just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I cooked my chicken, I seared it, and then I finished it off in the oven because I had seen people do that on the Food Network before. And I made a, uh, like a, a red pepper, kind of like a puree sauce with other really yummy things in it. And my dish was the favorite in that practice round. So I felt so proud of myself and super happy. And I think that's also why it gave me confidence to do a similar type of thing for another challenge in the, in the episode because I was like, well, it worked well, so cross my fingers and stump and hope for the best. I think there was another challenge, but I can't remember what it was. My brain, it's just like, I had a baby. <laughs> uh, maybe it'll come to me as I'm talking or maybe we just only had two. I just can't remember. Okay, so after the practice, we had some breaks. We had a break and that's when all of the wall of chefs came in and they got to like kind of saunter on they were joking with each other and we were just kind of sitting in the back just like what is happening these are all the famous chefs oh my gosh like just watching them roll in like massimo and lynn crawford like it was just it was so cool it was really really trippy and neat so so cool uh. We got outfitted in our Wall of Chefs apron, which no, we did not get to keep that apron. And we only got to wear one for the whole day. So they were cleaning us between takes all the time. So after a challenge, they would come back and, and clean us before the judges would taste our food. Oh, on that note, yes, the food is totally cold when they taste. So we do a challenge and the challenge is done, limbs up, then there's a break where they, the chefs get to like have some water, chill out, and we all get um, pulled back to the back and our aprons get cleaned and our food just sits there and if it's a warm dish, it gets kind of cold. So as they're tasting, they're totally tasting a cold dish. And now I understand why, because we are all like sweaty and messy. So they had this amazing crew of maybe like two or three folks that would come and pat our faces, wash off our aprons to get us camera ready for the actual tasting. Cause that's when there's a lot of like still close-ups and stuff. And it was funny cause for me, I <laughs> constantly was the dirtiest of everyone. And so I had like at least two people like scrubbing my apron, trying to get me all clean and presentable again. It was really, really funny. There's probably a lot more that I'm missing, but I'm gonna jump into your questions because that's probably gonna cover more than what I'm remembering currently. Okay, first question from Kendra Shaughnessy. Oh my God, it was so awesome to see you on there. How long did you film for? Uh, a long time, hours and hours, because you film the challenges, which are pretty short, and then you have a little break and you do the tasting, which takes forever even walking on and off sometimes we'd have to redo that take so like if you're eliminated maybe they want to redo that just in case it's so interesting it is very natural and in the moment but once in a while you kind of have to like recreate a moment for them not in the actual cooking that's all real and like as it's happening but like their reactions and stuff like that you might have to redo if if somebody messes up their lines or whatever because of course for the host everything is scripted and for us everything is not after you're done the cooking part, then you go into another room and do a long interview that they can draw from for the final edits and they ask you to go through what you did during the cook so then they can insert it into the editing. So afterwards you have to remember, okay, why did I use this ingredient there or what did I actually do? You have to really remember <laughs> and that's hard. I always wondered how they do that, but they, they just grill you as soon as you're done. They're like, okay, Tell us, tell us like it's happening right now, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, okay, I don't know. It was a full day 
at least. Uh, it was a long, long day. I was really tired at the end and my feet were very, very sore. <laughs> okay, Nanny D says, where can I watch it? Right now you can watch it on foodnetwork.ca. In the search bar on there, just put Wall of Chefs and all the episodes will come up. And mine is called Burger Wars. Yeah, you can watch it there for free. Bing of Fuel asks, how long was the shoot? How were the other home cooks? The chefs, so many questions. Well, I already answered how long the shoot was. The other home cooks, crooks? <laughs> the other home cooks were amazing. Particularly, I loved getting to know Kelsey. She was so warm and kind and bubbly and had lots of things to kind of talk about and giving each other little tips. Like she knew that I was a vegan chef and so between sections and like when we had little bathroom breaks and stuff, she would offer up tips. It was like, she was so, so sweet. And so any hugs that you saw me and Kelsey have on screen, those were all like real and legit and things that, you know, we just wanted to do. Jenica Hagen says, do you regret what you made second round or would you do it all again? Absolutely, I regret it. Yes, that is a great question. That night, thinking about it uh, in the hotel, I was just like, what was I doing? What was I doing making chicken when I'm a vegan chef? I made it because I thought it would be safe. I thought I could do it well. I had done it in the practice round and I was scared and I was just like, let's just do this. And I wanted to poach eggs because you think, you, you hear it's like hard to poach eggs. And so I was like, I think I can do this. I'm gonna give it a shot. So everything was really just kind of not that connected and, and kind of discombobulated. Looking back, I would have told myself to just take a breath, look at your vegan strengths, look at what you can do. I would have wanted to to really dig into something a bit more creative as opposed to trying stuff, uh, just, you know, just to impress judges or, or whatever. Yes, I don't exactly know what I would have made, but I, I kept myself up at night thinking about it like, oh, I could have done something else or I could have done, done something more fun or I could have used more stump techniques or, you know, all that stuff. But I am still proud of what I did. I'm proud of where I got to. So I don't have any regrets per se, but I think if I got to do it again, I would do something. I would do something different. The New Leaves asks, did it bug you that they kept saying hands up? <laughs> Does stuff like that bug you in general? Uh, great question. I thought it was funny every time they'd say hands up because they said it over and over and over again after like competition or whatever. I guess not over and over again, but it's just like in the practice rounds and as we were done, they would say it, you know, each time. And each time I would just have a little giggle and sometimes I would make eye contact with one of the chefs on the wall and kind of like smirk or laugh and they would like kind of smirk back. So it was like fun to have those little inside jokes with them. I wouldn't say it bugs me. I think it was just something to note and it was interesting. And I'd, let, I'd love to know if other people with limb differences watching the show thought the same thing. Like as they said, hands up, if they were like, ha ha, Alexis has one, so do I or whatever. So it was just an interesting note. In general, that stuff doesn't usually bug me, but I like to kind of joke about it with people to kind of bring some awareness to people's language and what they're saying. Cause not everyone has two hands to, to lift up. All right, Brendan Lee 123 says, how long did the episode take to film? Do you have to tell them your crowd pleaser in advance? Excellent question. For the crowd pleaser, you actually do have to tell them in advance, um, not too far in advance, but enough time so they can make sure that they have all of the ingredients that you need for your dish in their pantry. For example, my dish required a more rare ingredient uh, called kalanamak, which is like an eggy flavored sulfury salt that is used a lot in vegan cooking to kind of bring that egg flavor out if you're looking for that. And I, I of course use it on my vegan eggs. You have to tell them in advance so then when you're going to cook, you have everything available and it's great. Before the competition, they have a person, like a tech person come with you and kind of go around <laughs> Wow, I'm so gassy today. Go around the kitchen and say, are all of your ingredients here? And so I was going around, I'm like, yeah, okay, everything's here, blah, blah, blah. And then I find the salt and it's like black salt. And I was like, hmm, this, let's taste this. Oh, this isn't Kalanamak. This is just regular old black salt. And black salt is another name for Kalanamak. So I had to be like, hi, this isn't the right salt. I need Kalanamak. And they were like, 
okay, great. And so they, somebody went out, they found Cal and Mac. It was early in the morning. I don't even know what time it was at that point. They found it and they got it in time for the competition. It was amazing. It was so cool. Okay, Maria Aspen 18. What were your emotions in your head when you were eliminated? Honestly, my emotions in my head when I was eliminated were thank goodness and yes, I did it. And yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so those are all of the emotions. I was honestly so proud and happy to have made it that far and to not have gone home in the first round. My only goal going there was like, A, getting onto the show and B, trying my best to get into the second round past the first round. And I did all of those things. So I was really, really happy. Thrilled that I got to represent limb difference on the national screen on Food Network Canada. I felt very honored and excited. Yeah, it was just really, really great to do. I'm the entrepreneur says, can I find this anywhere? Yes, foodnetwork.ca, wall of chefs, episode, burger wars. Leap K says, how distracting was it when they came over to talk to you while you were cooking? It was distracting. As soon as the first competition started, I forgot that they do that. They don't really tell you what's gonna happen during the competition, they just kind of throw stuff at you. But I, I knew that they would because it's part of any cooking show, really. They came up for the first time and they were like, Oh, what you doing? And I was like, oh yeah, hello. Thankfully, they edited it so that I sounded coherent. I think I did a pretty good job actually. You know, I was my, my usual bubbly self and I, it came across a lot more coherent than it felt like at the time. It felt like I was just like all over the place. Luckily, my step kitchen roots really kind of helped me in the moment, I think. Did you know the meal categories before filming? No, the only one that we had an inkling of was our crowd pleaser and we didn't even know it was necessarily called that. We just knew that we were going to bring something that, you know, we love to make and that other people like to eat, but everything else was completely a surprise. They really don't prepare you um, for anything other than the first competition and that's just like a little bit prepared. Another question from Lieb K. Uh, what was your favorite part? Hmm. Honestly, I really liked the in-between section where the awesome folks would come around and clean our aprons because you had a time for a breather. You got to kind of interact with the chefs a little bit on the wall. One thing that was really cool about the actual competition parts was like you have no idea what the other people are doing unless you smell something. Like if you maybe smell someone grilling a certain ingredient or if they're cooking, you know, fish, like you can have a sense of the smells, but you have no idea what they're doing because you're so focused on your own dish. So after the first round, when I like finally could look up and like look at what other people had been doing, I had no idea. I was like, what? There's pancakes behind me? And like, I, I had no idea. So that was a really uh, fun part because it was such a surprise to see what your competitors were making. <coughs> Wow, that gas though, wow, <laughs> okay. I think another favorite part for me was being able to showcase my body and way of doing things. And like, I used a lot of stump techniques uh, during the competitions, like juicing my, my lemon with my stump and using the pepper grinder the way that I do um, and many other things that they, uh, you know, weren't able to, to fit into the episode. But I loved that. I loved like knowing that all those chefs were watching that and that people all over the country and hopefully the world one day are watching that and you know little ones with limb differences are like yeah that could be me i could do that too or you know just showing the world what's possible when they might not have thought about it before is just such a cool thing that i i got to do i also love knowing that when the episode aired i knew that callie and ethan you know kids that i i normally film with on the show who have a limb difference like me we're watching it and like what must that feel like to, to know somebody who looks like them who's on national tv like it, it just felt like a beautiful full circle full circle <laughs> full cir circle moment oh but also my favorite part was at the end because there's breaks between each competition i got to hug uh chef massimo and tell him he has a wonderful mustache. He said I did great, and I had a lot of really fun smiles with Lynn Crawford. It just felt like such a lovely, caring family. Like, you know, on the wall they look so scary, and the editing makes them look so scary, but in real life they were just like shooting the breeze, hey, how's it going, good job. It just felt like, I don't know, 
that I was a member of their club for a second. Great, so that kind of sums up my Wall of Chefs experience. Uh, thank you for the awesome questions. I would do it all again in a heartbeat. It was so much fun. It literally felt like it didn't even happen because it was so fast. But watching it a year later on the Food Network uh, Canada was just so awesome. So if you haven't checked it out, please do check out my episode. If you haven't subscribed to Stem Kitchen, I'd love that if you did. You can also support me on Patreon if you want to. Thank you so much for being here. And if you have any other questions about the show or anything, leave them in the comments below and I'll definitely answer them. Have a good one and we'll see you next time. Bye. Stump Kitchen, Stump Kitchen, gluten-free, vegan eats, stumptastic treats. Okay, bye, babies, Henry. <sighs> Great, we're all done, Joey. All done. We're all done. <laughs> He's so into it. <laughs> Who's that on the monitor? Is that you?